Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Quarantine Conversations. This is for Indiana University's Arts and Humanities Confront on the COVID-19 uh, Pro Ruski cast. And I'm uh, interviewing artists and uh, today mu musician uh, in their responses to uh, the pandemic and, and, and what uh, creative responses are happening and, and, and what we're also not, not perhaps happening. Uh, so today, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Fedor Fegmat Lazarov, and he is a musician. He is known as one of the original Len Punk uh, musicians from Leningrad, the Soviet Union. And he's also a composer and a music producer uh, operating in Russia, and I would say also in Europe right now. So I will let him take it over. And we're also, I'll just put in a plug that we will be exhibiting uh, some of Fetty's archives from the Len Punk scene this November in the Wells Library. Uh, and more to come on that. Okay, so with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Fetty. We're gonna, I'm gonna ans a ask a few questions and uh, thank you for joining us. So where, where are you right now? Because well, let me first uh, say hello to everybody. I'm really happy to uh, meet you, Andrea, and meet all the audience through you because it's, uh, it's a pleasure to me. Yeah, it's my privilege. I am in Budvar right now. I'm staying in Budvar, Montenegro. If you know the country, if you ever been here, <laughs> yes, everybody knows that there is a country called Montenegro. It's close to Italy. It's close to Balkan. It's in at the Balkan, in fact. But uh, the fantastic thing about this country is that uh, it's entirely entirely covered with mountains, very beautiful mountains, and there is sea which is also very beautiful it's it's just an amazing place to stay and Budva is such a small town and we're very sure and uh, our house is just between the sea and the mountains that I I can see it in my windows but it's it's it's, it's dark now but it's very beautiful and when we came here right before uh, the coronavirus caught the Europe and Russia. We were so fortunate, so lucky to escape from Russia right before things started. We came here, it was uh, in the early March, and we uh, took a car to go across the mountains to just to explore the place. And we saw this snow that there is no snow in Russia anymore. <laughs> as far as I know, that, that winter was without snow, went without snow at all. But uh, there was snow, beautiful, fantastic. It just fell down, and it was so amazing, you know, for us. It, it, it was in March, yes, and it was so hot down by the sea side. It was really, really hot, and it was rather cold. And people were going to ski. Okay. It was so crazy to us, you know. So we decided to stay here for as long as we can. And uh, this is, uh, I, I believe that. It actually it's the first place where I felt myself so comfortable. So I I realized that I don't want to run anywhere anymore. I just, I just want to stay. Finally, I want to stay somewhere, settle down, and uh, have something to do. And fortunately, I have this sort of uh, work that I can do online on the remote. I can work uh, with my project, uh, getting them online. But um, yes, the lockdown came and it, it caught us in a very tiny room that we rented, waiting for the better apartments to be finished for us. They have some reconstructions there. And uh, I had no instruments with me. I had only this computer. Oh. And I had some projects to do. <laughs> you wanted to ask me about the technical stuff that I, yes. I, I was doing. But the first thing that I had to do, I, I had to find a uh, keyboard and uh, because I, I really I, I got this very interesting project that I had to do for a TV in Russia back in Russia it's a project dedicated to the history of uh, Leningrad started from uh, the probably 40s of the last century to the to the end of Leningrad which is at the 90s when the town was uh, had a new name, St. Petersburg. So it's a, it's a history of Leningrad. And he asked me to write uh, 10 songs 
not songs, tracks uh, mm -hmm. for their projects, for their programs. And uh, I had to re reconstruct the music that was uh, so very well known on the TV, on the radio, back in the Soviets. Mm -hmm. But I had to do it unrecognizable, but still very, very, very straight to the uh, the kind of point, point you know. yes, a point in the timeline, you know, okay. you can, you, because you know, music has such a such a such a such a thing that you can, if you if you are a musician or a sound producer or just a people listening, well, a normal person listening mm -hmm. to music, yeah, if you hear something, it's got some connection to the precise moment in the history. Yes, and this is what I had to do. I had to recreate the sound of those tracks uh, the instruments of those tracks and everything should be re recreated as if it was recorded back in the 40s for instance and i had i had no instruments with me i started playing on the computer keyboard and then i found this russian guy here who was a who was a fitness uh, coach and the fitness uh, center was a uh, fitness club was closed and he had nothing to do. He found me on the Facebook and he brought me this very tiny, like this one, very tiny <laughs> keyboard. And I recorded all the tracks, all the 10 tracks <laughs> using this thing. Remarkable. Because, I, of course, I, I tried to find something and I tried to buy it in Germany and I already ordered it, uh, delivery from Germany. But uh, the borders were closed, the delivery was closed, everything was closed, so I just I had nothing. But then I realized that we are in the better place, in the best place, actually, because uh, COVID-19 didn't hit much uh, Montenegro at all. In our very town, Budva, we had only four people uh, diagnosed with uh, COVID, and uh, the entire country had only nine deaths, as far as I know now, which is next to nothing. The yeah. project that I'm doing now for myself, which is called Floor is Lava, it, it's uh, exactly uh, about me making this move and uh, getting finally this sort of feeling that I'm free from the past, I'm free from everything that was, you know, it, it, I'm not feeling unrooted or like sort of uh, uh, taken out of the uh, ground that was... Uh, my origin ground. I'm feeling okay, very much. I'm feeling way better than before. I and, and I wrote a song about it. And I've I wrote a song about uh, leaving the place because I actually wanted to leave quite long ago. I think what's important as as makers and artists that we you know if we're lucky enough to find a place that speaks to us and we can you know, yes, as, yeah, as, a friend, yeah. as a friend as a friend of mine said um, some years ago uh, she's a, she's a video artist. Uh, but she said the most important thing as as an artist is you have to find a place where you can really make your work. And that's on many yeah. levels. It's not just financial. It's also the psychological, the emotional. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a place that really feeds you. And she goes, and, yeah. and she, she, yeah. was, she was talking about New York at this point and just making a point to me. She goes, not yeah. every, New York is not good for everybody, period. You know, so, yeah. and it, it, it's not, <laughs> it's very not for everyone. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and and so but 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 along those lines um I, I think it's really exciting right now to see you and you're, and you're also with your wife um Annika who's who's also an artist um and that you 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 came to this 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 wonderful place and you're and you're producing now and um and 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 I think it's also interesting that in that you're producing also but w without maybe your full studio of you know recording yeah, yeah. and so forth in this project in Floor is Lava, I thought that finally I came back to the um, to the things that I wanted to discuss with people by writing songs, by singing them, by recording. Um, uh, and it's not politics anymore. You know, while staying in right. Russia, I was a punk, I was uh, trying to fix the problems, I was trying to talk to people that it's not correct, and this way is right, this way is not right. You know, you always want to fight when you stay there. Mm -hmm. When you leave there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. But um, what, what are, are, 
yeah. I'm free of, the, of that all. And I, it, it doesn't mean that I, won't, I didn't want to do it. I don't want to do that anymore. I just yeah. feel like I'm ready to do something else. And I'm really happy about it. And of course, yes, uh, this sort of uh, experience that we had on the lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, it moved me to, to the right place, to the right condition of uh, creativity. And mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. Because uh, sometimes you need to be uh, trapped in a cage to be locked with yourself to yeah. to actually feel what is uh, important and what is not. And the first day when I when we were free, when they told us that we can leave finally, we can finally go for a walk anywhere yeah. to the seaside or to the mountains. So I went up to the mountains because they were in my window and I, when I walked, I was walking on the balcony. And there were there were mountains everywhere. And that was the first time I wanted the first place I wanted to be. Uh -huh. So I went up there, and the thing was, that I felt it was like I, I was back to my youth, to my childhood. I sent the the smells that I wanted to send, uh, smell, and I saw the sights that I wanted to see, and I had those dreams again, and I felt myself as I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I, th that's when I realized that we are in, in the right place, in the right time, and uh, the project that I'm doing, I'm, you know, it's, you, you always feel sort of, you know, I was, I yes. wasn't saying that it was right or not, but yes. now when I, when I've actually done it, I sent the the mixes to Italy to the guy who was also locked down in his house, doing mastering for me. Yes. And I got these masters back, and I felt okay. This is the music that I always wanted to do. This oh. is me, this is uh, everything that I wanted. You know, actually, Flora is Lava is the music that I've heard during the time of my life since I was a kid. I heard these um, Mahalia Jackson records that were in my house of my mother, and, and I heard that classical music records, and I heard that jazz that she was listening to, and the first Miles Davis records in a silent way that was sent to my mother mm. when I was 10 or, so, or something. And everything is in me, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I write music nowadays, I understand that uh, I can't recall the name or title of a song. Mm -hmm. And I hardly can remember when I first time heard it. Mm -hmm. But I, I still can feel the same feeling, the same mm -hmm. emotions that I had when I first time heard it. And uh, sometimes I don't understand, I don't actually realize if I uh, borrow something or if I just uh, pay credit to something else. But it, this music is, it, it's like Paul McCartney said it better actually mm -hmm. than me. He said that it's the music that fell on him and he just uh, passed it through him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's the same thing for everybody, for every music creator. I believe it's the same. So Floris Lava is me now. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's, 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 that's so, that, that's just so absolutely just, that's such a beautiful thing to hear, especially in this time. Uh, I, I'm wondering with, with that, like, what are some, what are some of the themes that you're working with uh, that, you know, and, and because I, I know like in, in the past, I would say that you were a little bit of a, in, in Russia, a little bit of a provocateur. You, there was definitely like a kind of like, there was a little political edge in some of the work too, of course, being, being punk. Um, but but what what are some are there new themes or, or th themes that you're you've returned to? Again, as you said, sort of like connecting back into your your past. A kind of I, I would say it sounds like a very like like a true and like pure experience with music with music again. And I'm still a DIY music recorder. I'm still doing the same thing in a tiny room, uh, yeah. having what I have in hand. Uh, well, speaking frankly, now I have this uh, keyboard and I have this bass there and I have an acoustic guitar and I have something being brought to me by uh, already working companies here in Montenegro. But yes, uh, it's, it's a very, very simplified way of music production. And uh, if... Uh, um, if I try to describe the style of this music, it's just what I can do with this. Mm -hmm. If I have a bass guitar, I can mm -hmm. play it, okay. If I don't have it, and if I don't have, for, for instance, if I don't have any percussion, sometimes I record these this sounds. I just record some Foley records, some whatever I hear, you know, I have this little thing. It's the only thing that I brought here. I, I used it, it's a, 
it's a Zoom recorder, which is uh, good for, it's got two microphones, it's got, uh, it, it records stereo. So I can go out, I can go to the forest, record oh, yeah. whatever, whatever I, I want to record there. Uh, I remember when I still had my car, I recorded some sounds of this car and I used it in my records because they were percussive. I was pushing the button of the window and basically it, it gives me some additional feeling of uh, the records that I've done. It's got some uh, connection to the place where it's been recorded or thought of, or maybe we, I don't know, passed something. And uh, I remember about it. Maybe th somebody who would be listening to this uh, song wouldn't mention it at all if, it, if he doesn't understand what's going on. But this song still uh, provides some sort of... So you're, you're, adding, you're adding these th th this kind of, I'd say, texture to your work. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yes, it, it definitely adds a lot of texture. By the way, that, uh, that stool, that... Um, Chair Annika was sitting and playing her video games in the room that we were locked down. It, it had some uh, cracking and terrible sound. <laughs> it was yeah, all yeah. broken. So yeah. I recorded it and I put it, it, this sound somewhere in a new song. I'm, I'm recording a new, a new bunch of songs now. And uh, I think I'm, go I'm gonna finish it. You know, I finished seven songs of this project already. And I'm looking for a label deal because for an entire my life I've been independent, I've been unsigned. And it's the first time that I actually feel myself so strong and so uh, so self-assured. Predictions or how do you feel the COVID pandemic is affecting music and coming out of it? Uh, what, what, what do you see happening? Well, maybe it's my own uh, personal feeling, but uh, I feel that music has be already has already become more important for people than it was uh, before pandemic. In a way, it, it helps people to survive. It helps people to survive the hard times and just to, to to feel alive when they are locked down. So in in the end, we have more musicians making better music, uh, more musicians and uh, amateurs trying to play online gigs and doing some donations there and whatever they want to do, but most of them do it for fun. But it's cool, you know, music has to be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if it's back to this importance as it was in the 1960s uh, when music uh, was to made to, to, to change the world, you know, people still thought that it could change the world. Yeah. But uh, now I can, th I can actually say that uh, probably it has changed the world now. And, or oh, maybe the world has changed the music, I don't know. But uh, in the end, we have the better situation. What? Very good records, just, I'm finishing it for, for, for a band from Moscow. Mm -hmm. it, and these guys also, they are sitting in their houses, they are sharing records made, made at home. And they send them to me to mix and they have no idea of, uh, they have no plan to uh, promote it or to release it. They just are doing it for fun. So every uh, every song of this uh, six song album has different style, has various uh, sounds there. And they have, um, they have had some references for me. Like uh, they said, uh, this song we wanted from uh, the sixties, this song we want uh, to sound like that, this song we want to sound like this. So it was another work like that that I've done for the Leningrad TV programs. I just kept on doing the same thing, but fluently, you know. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what, like the, <laughs> what, what is the name? Of, I, what is the name of the band you're working with in Moscow? Uh, uh, it's a Russian name, basically in Russian, and so it sounds very weird. Oh, uh, you can say in Russian. It's a, we have a Russian audience. Со мною вот что. It's basically. I think it's a. It's a phrase taken out from a song, mm. uh, from a very, very lyrical and romantic, romantic song from a famous movie, Soviet movie, mm -hmm. about the Christmas time, the New Year's. Oh, is that? Yes, uh, it, it's, it's from there. Yeah, yeah. It means uh, what, 
the entire phrase sounds like some noise, what's the происходит. It means uh, in, in English, it's uh, uh, this is what happens to me. Mm-hmm. But they cut it, they took a part of it, so if, I don't know how to, how to yeah. translate. This is what. Is the film reference, is, is, what is the film reference? Is, is it about the, I'm, I'm ah, trying to remember the reference. It's, it's about a, um, a man that goes to a park, uh, and it's the same, it looks like his apartment in St. Petersburg, but he's in Moscow, and um, I'm forgetting. Yes, the yes, it's that movie. Uh, it's a, yeah, yeah, you know the movie. Yeah, <laughs> the destiny, the destiny of, the destiny of faith or the irony. Wait, uh, yeah, irony, uh, the irony, irony of, irony faith? of destiny is something. Yeah, yeah they're okay. younger than me, and mm-hmm. all of these uh, references that uh, that they would send to me would work another way on my mind because you know, uh, to me, they were probably a part of the culture and the uh, radio background that I wouldn't want to hear in my youth because I wanted to hear some rock music, some Beatles, more of the Beatles, more of the Deep Purple, please. Uh, then, then there was punk rock, of course, but we heard that music uh, that they uh, sent me as a reference. Mm-hmm. And now in my, in my age, I don't feel that pain anymore, you know. Just 10 years ago, I'll probably say that, fuck, what are we doing? Why should I mix these songs? Because it's just, uh, it just makes me feel sick. Mm-hmm. But uh, nowadays, especially after I've done that uh, project for the Leningrad CD series, well, I was okay and I was really happy to, to meet the... Uh, requirements because it was on the other hand it was hard for them to find a producer who would, who would do that okay. who would agree to do that because you know if they ask me for instance they asked me to mix a song in um, uh, early 60s style mm-hmm. and I decided to split the stereo in this uh, crucial way that Beatles right. would do um, right. bass and drums and guitars mm-hmm. and vocals so it's like that and when you put your earphones here you just wow it's, it's, it's hard to listen to but i've done it and then i uh, did some other trick that made it sound more contemporary and more comfortable in our time mm-hmm. uh, but still it uh, it's it's got this uh, very very strict reference to the time to the very year i would say so it's it's a fun chapter yeah, I really, I, I'm really happy doing this sound production work. No, I, I'm feeling the same as I was when I when I was a kid when I heard the music the very first time and it, it in, impressed me so much. So I decided not to be a Nazis like my mother wanted me to be, mm-hmm. and I it was a very very strong thing that I felt and I actually had this I, not idea but uh, aim in my life. You know, I, I actually had decided to be a musician at the age of 10, I think. Okay. And uh, uh, it was then when I heard that song by Mahalia Jackson, it was uh, a very old spiritual gospel song. Okay. Uh, it's called uh, God Knows the Reason Why. Mm-hmm. So I decided to recreate this song on the lockdown when I had nothing to do. I just had some some days off and I thought of recreating this song. I found this song on the web. And I re- reproduced all of the instruments, or an organ, piano, drums, bass, mm-hmm. everything was reproduced. I already had that keyboard. <laughs> 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 and I started playing it, and I felt myself as if I was playing with those old uh, black musicians who recorded this song in the 90s, 54. Yeah, very... 11 years before I was born. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I tried to sing this song afterwards, and it was so hard, you know, because that vibrator that she, uh, all of the singers back then sang with this very fast and strong vibrator, mm-hmm. and I have, I don't have this sort of ability to 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 sing like that. I never practiced it. At first, I tried to do that to create it, and I realized that no, it's no, there's no way to do that. So I tried to sing it my own way, and I'm still unhappy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm still not happy with the record, but I started doing it, and I felt myself uh, like I was uh, sent back in time uh, 
because I played in te- the note to note, note to note. I recreated mm-hmm. the whole every every, every arrangement that every, every part that they were they were playing in the band. So that's 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 a great experience. If you, if even if I have this song unfinished forever, I'm still I've still have have I've had this. Uh, I still have had this experience. It's a very immersive happy time, right? experience, like a, an immersive experience into into the making. I mean, really, like I'm, I'm yeah, trying to channel yeah. or understand uh, yeah. a song, like through 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 the through the the playing, but also the recording, which is yes, yeah. which that that had that had to have been like really really fulfilling. I can only imagine. I'm looking for a video uh, artist to to collab with me on the videos for the on the music videos for these songs mm-hmm. so if we have somebody somewhere having any ideas mm-hmm. after listening to these songs uh just uh, i am free to i'm open to any uh, offer to collaborate i i have my friend in uh Czechoslo- czechia oh, where oh, yeah. we want to go yeah. and uh, he's got his wife who uh, they, they both are some one way or another involved in the video collection and they agreed to to do some video for me for free because it's just like you know it's the same way to spend time the best <laughs> you just do something for somebody and you have fun you are happy to do that and so i think that's the that's the way it should be released now if uh, if i don't have any label and if i don't have any opportunity to mm-hmm. to release uh the album or singles, or I don't know how to make money out of it. So maybe I just have to do some videos and upload them on the, on YouTube so that people can listen to it. And then and we will still be looking for the label. Yeah, yeah. But then I would be with my video production friends here, maybe yeah. some other musician, because I want to start playing live. Of course, I want to find some Montenegrin musicians here to start playing with them. I need a drummer, maybe. I don't know who else were there be in this band because it's an electronic band first of all. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I just have I just have to applaud both of you and and, and Anaka for this this uh-huh. really again this very auspicious and wonderful landing. Um, <laughs> and and I just and, and thank you again for uh, sharing uh, with us your uh, current projects and uh, in your creative practice today, Fetty. Oh, thank you for inviting me for this interview. Thank you for waiting for me until I will be, I would be ready for that. Because <laughs> I was in, 